chapter 11, even the earth is a revolutionary. Once breakfast was over, most of the kids left, except for a dozen who stayed behind, including us. I told my sisters that we might as well stick around for the summer camp program. Cecile had made it clear she didn't want to see us anytime soon, so we told Sister Mukumbu our names and followed her and Sister Pat, the young woman in the Cal State t-shirt, into a classroom. I felt silly and wrong calling a grown person brother so-and-so or sister such-and-such, but thanks to Cecile, we now had brothers and sisters we had never before laid eyes on. Sure, they said brother and sister in Brooklyn, but here it was more of a title and not like you were saying him or her. As far as I could tell, none of the grown people at the center went by Mr., Mrs., or Miss. If Big Ma could see how quickly our home training had flown out the window, she would have had us on the next Boeing 727 back to New York. There was something welcoming about Sister Mukumbu, whom I liked right away. If Sister Mukumbu had met us at the airport, she, we would have felt welcomed as she stepped forward to claim us. She would have wrapped us up in her green, purple, and orange African print dress and begged our forgiveness for having left us. We sat at one of the two long tables. The classroom was unlike any I had ever been in. Instead of pictures of George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, and President Johnson, there was a picture of Huey Newton sitting in a big wicker chair with a rifle at his side. There were other pictures of mostly black men and a few women hung up around the room. I expected to find Dr. Martin Luther King's photograph hanging on the wall, but I was disappointed. Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali were the only faces I could name. I didn't know any of the women, although one woman looked just like Big Ma. Next to her picture were the words, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. On the walls were big sheets of lined rule paper written in teacher's neat handwriting. The first one said, what we want, in green letters, and on the other side of the wall, another said, what we believe. Vonetta didn't seem to care that we were in some sort of Black Panther summer camp, learning to become Black Panthers. Her attention was fixed on the three sisters with the flared sleeve dresses and their round curly afros. I knew I would hear all about it later, how it was time for her to have a new hairstyle and that our clothes were baby clothes. Sister Mukumbu said, Hirohito Woods, a boy from the other table with dark spiky hair, brown coppery skin, and slanted eyes groaned. He was probably my age. Sister Mukumbu smiled in spite of his groaning. She beckoned him to her side, her many bracelets jangling as she waved him forward. Hirohito will help with my demonstration. I didn't have to turn to see Vonetta's mile-long pout. It was just like Vonetta to be envious of someone else being in the spotlight. Hirohito didn't seem thrilled. He pushed his chair backward, scraping the floor, and went su sullenly up to the front. It was only from the back of his spiky head that I recognized him as the flying T-board rider who nearly mowed us down yesterday. I had half a mind to sock him good. Sister Mukumbu said, I'm going to be the sun and Hirohito will be the earth. She leaned and whispered something in his ear. He heaved a big sigh like he didn't want to do whatever it was she was told him but would do it anyway. The sign was for us kids, so he didn't come off as some kind of teacher's pet. Sister Mukumbu nodded and said firmly, Now, Hirohito. He heaved another sigh and began to turn around slowly, each time taking a step to travel around Sister Mukumbu, who stood still and smiled. This was better than socking him in the arm, watching him turn around and around in his black and silver Raiders jersey. He looked down and probably felt silly. All the kids in the program, including my sisters and me, giggled. Sister Mukumbu wasn't bothered by our giggling or by Hirohita's sighing. She said, the earth turns slowly on its axis while also spinning around the sun. Day wouldn't change tonight if the earth didn't spin on its axis. The seasons wouldn't change if the earth didn't travel around the sun. 
This means vegetation wouldn't grow, which means poor farmers couldn't harvest and poor people couldn't eat if the, the earth didn't spin on its axis and travel around the sun. That when bodies spinning in motion affects everyone's lives, does anyone know another word for the earth's constant spinning? That was how I knew Sister Makumbu was a real teacher. Aside from her welcoming smile and her blackboard penmanship, she asked a teacher's type of question, the kind that says, join in. Thanks to my time spent with Miriam Webster, I had a few words in mind. Rotating, orbiting, turning, circling. I wanted to join in, but I felt silly being one of the older kids. Not as silly as Hirohito, spinning around, but too old to wave my hand frantically as all the younger kids around me were doing. The older sister of the three girls also sat on her the older sister of the three girls also sat on her answer. She probably knew too, but left it up to her sisters who wanted to be called on. When one of the kids called out, Revolving, Sister Makumbu clapped her hands. Her bangles jangled. Yes, all of your words are right, but revolving is right on. Sister Pat gave the boy a cookie. Sister Makumbu said, revolving, revolution, revolutionary, constant turning, making things change. Sister Pat said, Huey Newton is a revolutionary. Huey makes change. And Sister Makumbu continued saying, Che Guevara was a revolutionary. Che made change. As they named all the revolutionaries who made change, Hirohito came to a complete stop. He held out his hands his a dizzy Frankenstein, and staggered to his chair. The boy who won the cookie said, Nice spinning, twinkle toes. And Hirohito rested his head on the table and closed his eyes. I just thought, Serves you right. Sister Makumbu announced, Today we're going to be like the earth, spinning around and affecting many. Today we're going to think about our part in the revolution. Vonetta's hand shot up. I kicked her under the table, but she was determined to have everyone look at her, which meant have everyone look at us. I forgot all about Hirohito and was now afraid of what Vonetta would say next. And sure enough, Vonetta said, We didn't come for the revolution. We came for breakfast. Then Fern added, And to meet our mother in Oakland. If Hirohito spinning made us giggle, Vonetta's declaration made everyone, except my sisters and me, and the still dizzy Hirohito, full out laugh. The group of girls whom Vanetta had been winking at were the main cacklers. Even Sister Makumbu, caught off guard by Vanetta's and Fern's outbursts, allowed herself a chuckle. I blamed Vanetta and not Fern, since I didn't want the world to learn we didn't rightfully know our mother. Fern wouldn't have uttered a word if Vanetta hadn't raised her hand to speak. Even worse, Vonetta had thrown a king-sized monkey wrench into my plans. I had hoped to ask Sister Makumbu about the name of the Black Panthers called Cecile and why they called her that. I didn't know exactly how I would have asked her, but something made me believe she would know and that she wouldn't make me feel bad for asking. She certainly wouldn't have given me that, oh, you poor motherless girl, pity look, or the snooty, don't you even know your own mother's name? Sister Makumbu would have given me the plain, pure, teacherly truth. Then Vonetta raised her hand and opened her mouth and had the world looking and laughing at us, except for the boy who was too dizzy to laugh. I wasn't about to add fuel to the fire by asking questions about the things that I should know, like my mother's name. Chapter 12 Crazy Mother Mountain After the program ended for the day, we stayed out as long as we could. By six o'clock, we were hungry. Whether she liked it or not, Cecile had to let us inside her, her green stucco house. When she opened the door, all she said was, You back? Then she spread the tablecloth on the floor and brought out shrimp lo mein and egg rolls from the kitchen. She had probably gone out to mean May Lady Ming's while we were at the center. We washed up and sat Indian style around the food. I said the blessing, and then I asked, Why the Black Panthers call you in Zilla? No use letting my curiosity go itching. If I had to ask someone, I might as well go straight to the mountain, the crazy mother mountain. She gave me a blank stare. Like I said something wrong. 
Then she, then she corrected me. Nzilla. In place of shrugs, my sisters and I shot one another glances. That was not a Brooklyn sound or an Alabama sound. It was probably not even an honest-to-goodness Oakland sound. Instead of trying it out, I said, Why they call you that? My sisters followed. Isn't your name Cecile? Yeah, Cecile. She said, My name is Nzilla. Nzilla is a poet's name. My poems blow the dust off surfaces to make clear and true paths. Nzilla. I gave her a plain stare. Plain and blank. It might as well have been an eye roll. She probably hated my father's plain face on me. That the plain way about him was the plain way about me. I didn't know about blowing dust and clearing paths. I knew about hot combing thick heads of hair and iron, ironing pleated wool skirts for school. She said, it's Yoruba for the path. I knew better than to roll my eyes at her so-called name and where she said it was from. Instead, I asked where your Ruba was. She quickly told me it was a people, a nation, in the land of our ancestors. Vonetta asked, You mean Prattville, Alabama? This time I wouldn't kick Vonetta. Good old Vonetta. Prattville was where Papa and Big Ma were originally from. They weren't from Big City, Mobile, Montgomery, or Selma, but from Prattville. And truth be told, my daddy and my grandmama came from a one-cow town rubbing next to Prattville. They just said Prattville because it was more known. I asked, so you can change your name anytime you want to? Vonetta, to anything you want to? Fern, to anything you can spell? Cecile said, it's my name, myself. I can name myself. And if I'm not the one I was but am now, a new self, why wouldn't I call myself? By an old name. Then I said, if you keep changing your name, how will people know you or your poems? When my sisters and I speak, one right after the other, it's like a song we sing, a game we play. We never need to pass signals. We just fire off, rat-a-tat, rat-a-tat. <laughs> Delphine, Vonetta, Fern. Me, suppose you got famous for writing poems. Vonetta, then everyone knew your name. Fern, and you couldn't hide. She said, my poems aren't about that, fame-seeking poems. They're about they're pe the people's art. Although yesterday she didn't want to have anything to do with the people. I said, what if all the people could recite all your poems? Vonetta, and they said them on the radio. Fern, and you became famous. Me, you could, couldn't hide then. Fern, Surely couldn't, she said. Who are you all working for? I think you all working for the man undercover, the FBI, the Cointel Pro. I knew about the FBI from Sunday night shows and from the news, but who were Cointel Pro? Cecile knew she had us baffled and took control of the talk, like she had grabbed both the ball and the jacks. Oh, they're slick, all right, she said. The feds hire midgets to to front as kids, and they infiltrate families with long-lost cousins who don't look a thing like you. But you take them in, because that's how colored folks do. And before you can say, way down home, your long-lost kin are documenting your every move for their weekly secret meetings with the man. Family don't tell on family, I said. Not real family. Surely don't. That's what you think, Cecile said. She went on after... She went after Vonetta first because Vonetta was needy in a way that Fern and I weren't. Her eyes stayed wide and fearful. They get you alone, alone and scared. They say, Vonetta Gaither, do you love your country? Do you love your father, your sisters, your Uncle Darnell in Vietnam, and Big Ma in Brooklyn? At Fern she aimed, Little girl, do you love your doll baby? Do you love Captain Kangaroo? Your, your kindergarten teacher, graham crackers, and story time? Well, if you want to keep all that safe, tell us all you know about the person named Cecile Johnson, also known as your mother. Fern said her name was not Little Girl, that she was going into the second grade, and that she watched Mighty Mouse and not Ca Captain Kangaroo. Before Cecile got to me, I said, 
They don't ask kids nothing. No one listens to kids. If this was Red China, they would. The Red Chinese Communist Party don't play. Kids younger than that little girl turned their mother and father over to the Reds for treason and re-education. We are not in Red China, I told her. To that, she only grunted, like, That's what you think.